let's get started discussing our triple header strategy. Three easy pieces. Now, I always tell traders, and I've been trading for 45 years, and I talk to lots of groups and seminars on you know, information groupings, introductions, webinars, conferences. And what I always stress is that you should never, ever follow somebody else's strategy. You need to develop your own trading strategy. You can take somebody else's and modify it, but only the person developing it actually knows all the little ins and outs. And you need to make it your own. So there, there are probably as many trading strategies as there are traders, but not all trading strategies are equal. And I suggest that you find some strategies and then build a trading plan around them. There's a plethora of trading strategies available to you, but I also encourage you to create your own. When you build and test your own strategy, you are the master and you are understand the ins and outs. So I always encourage traders to develop their own trading strategy, time permitting. But like I said, you can start with somebody else's. Like today, we're gonna to learn this triple header strategy, but I couldn't teach it all to you in one day. I've been trading it with it for years and years and years, and it's always got some little piece of other information. But you can start with what I give you and then make it your own. Now, creating a strategy from scratch is very time consuming. But the easiest way to do this is ensured is you want to analyze your charts and look for opportunities. The easiest way is you go back and what I do, I go back and say, look at that. I could have made a lot of money if I would have traded that asset. Then I say to myself, what would have given me or told me that there was a trading opportunity? And I use a process of elimination, say, ah, if I would have done this, this, and this, I would have seen that opportunity. So then I can use that the next time. But then I have to test it and make sure it works. It's not just a one-time bony. So if you see a strategy worked on a recent movement, look for at least 20 or more trading signals. Check for profitability by adding up the wins and losses. And this is one of the main important reasons all the brokers give you demo, demo platforms. Most people think they give you demo platforms in a way to suck you into trade. But it really isn't. I've been trading, like I said, 45 years, and I spend half of my trading on demos because this is where you test everything. This is where you define and refine everything. Now remember, not all trading advice is good. Figure out where the advice has come from, how much you trust the source, and this is particularly important when using the internet. There is so much garbage out there on the internet. There are lots of amateurs out there who think they know what they're doing and they come and they do videos, they do papers, they write stuff up. Even if you go to TradingView, you see some of these people that are, are really even traders, so to speak. They like to draw on their charts and then they like to make comments and they think of it as social media. They just talk and talk off their heads. But they've never gone back and tested anything. You know, they come up with, for Bitcoin, 66.58 is a retracement level. Why? They can't tell me. They tell me because they dropped their Fibonacci's on there. Well, that's not how a retracement level just comes. So don't just follow blindly. So when you develop your own trading strategy, you'll start out with a set of recommendations from analysts or other traders. Try these out on a demo account and then modify them and see what happens. It's important to create your own formula for success as this will improve your trading skills, but you don't have to reinvent the wheel. You can learn from trading analysts and experienced traders. They are still in the market because they are successful. Study their strategies and learn from them. Don't follow them blindly, 
but test out what they are saying and see if it works. And there's not one strategy, and this is what too many traders want to do, is they want to incorporate everything into one strategy. Well, not all strategies are a remedy for all. You have to decide what you want your strategy to do. Do you want it to give you trading signals, You know, transaction signals, tell you there's a potential buy or sell opportunity? Or do you want to give you entry points? So online trading is considered by some to be one of the most challenging styles of trading, which is why it's important to jumpstart your journey with proven trading strategies. But build your own strategy. I always tell them, think differently, but don't think complex. Too many people want to have all of this complex, complex strategy. But basically, a simple strategy is just alerting you to an opportunity to buy or sell. It's a set of filters that when it happens, it's going to give you an opportunity. Risk management is ultimately the most important. Price action is ultimately the most important. But trading is simple, but it's not easy. So a sound trading practice is to not take this information at face value. Rather, think differently and validate the statements about the product to see if there's a bona fide trading opportunity. And believe me, if somebody tells you they're going to give you a super secret strategy or a super secret scanner or a way to beat the markets that nobody else will do, three steps to make a fortune, please just go away from them. So, with all that said, let's start with the first and most important step in building my triple header strategy. And that is using support and resistance. Now, whether you call support and resistance or demand and supply or peaks and troughs, I don't think it really matters. The important part is that you get better with identifying these levels where price changes direction and reverses. Where are the bulls coming in? Where are the bears coming in? These areas can be, can be signified for a trader to be able to start to recognize where there are probability areas for entering a trade at a lower risk. Now, there are many, many ways of locating support and resistance. My best and my basis for this strategy is what I call eyeballing. It's going back and looking at your charts and finding specific swing lows and swing highs in the past action. And I always, always place my support and resistance on all charts, no matter what strategy I'm using. And now I use these in conjunction with candlestick analysis, but it's our step one in our triple header strategy. Support and resistance area shows you where to buy or sell. They are vital parts of every trader's toolkit and it's essential to learn how to place them. Placing support and resistance areas in, is the most important skill you can master in trading. And placing them is relatively easy. Support and resistance areas divide your chart up into buy and sell areas. An area that sits above a current price is a sell area. An area that sits below a current price is a buy area. So think of support and resistance as the floors above and below your head in an elevator. The floor is what is supporting you. And the resistance is what's above your head because you have to break through that head. Now, there's many ways. There's pivot points. There's eyeballing. There's swing highs and swing lows. There's Fibonacci levels. There's all different ways to secure support and resistance. For this trading strategy, we're going to use eyeballing and locating the support and resistance or the areas that are around the price over a time span of a couple months that price has had a problem moving through. Now, the only ones that we're concerned with are the ones that are around the current price. 
So let me pop up a chart. Okay, now, the red line on the chart okay, is a major support area. The blue lines above and below are support and resistance areas. And the reason there are two of each is I use what's called for this trading a support and resistance zones because support and resistance are not finite numbers. They are areas. And here we have to have an area. Okay. And that area is important. So I've done these by eyeballing. I've gone back over my price charts and I've looked at the, and this is my teaching chart, the Euro US dollar, where prices had a problem or touched a lot of times in the past and had a problem going above or below it. We can see here, then here, then here, this support zone held. Okay, again, we have it here. And we're only building a zone. We're not making a critical decision. We're only building a zone. Okay. Here, we can see in the past how all of those closes and opens were right on that price level. Okay. And if we went back farther on the chart, you'd see more and more of them. And here we see, look how critical this price was here. Here, but this price was extended from the past. When it was brought forward, look at that. So this gave us our zone above and below. The only thing we're concerned with is right now are the support and resistance areas above and below the chart, the current price. Now, when I drew these on the chart a couple hours ago, price was trading here. We've had these candles develop since then. And look at that. This candle has moved right in between that support and that zone. And that's gonna be important. Here we had another one that closed on that zone. Here we had another candle that closed in that zone. And those are gonna be important to us as we move forward with our strategy. But now that we have our support and resistance, and I'm gonna try, I've got a little short presentation on locating support and resistance. And I'm gonna share with you because it's a confusing concept to a lot of people, but it's really not that difficult but it is very personalized. So let me share this presentation with you. And then we're going to go on to point part two of our triple header strategy. Well, apart from helping us to identify potential trade areas, one of the other common uses for support and resistance is helping us identify whether a market is ranging or trending. If price is making higher highs and higher lows by breaking resistance levels and using them as support, then the market is said to be trending upwards. And if the market is making lower lows and lower highs by breaking support levels and using them as a resistance, then it is said to be trending downwards. If the market is moving sideways between two levels of support and resistance, then the market is said to be ranging as it is not making any significant movement to the upside or the downside. Some traders have strategies they will only employ if the market is trending or ranging. So using this analysis helps them to decide whether to implement a particular trading strategy or not. So why does support and resistance work? Put simply, support and resistance areas work because lots and lots of traders are watching them. Traders identify these areas because you tend to get a lot of trading activity at these levels. Some traders will be waiting to trade the reversal at the identified area and other traders also like to trade the breakouts whereby price breaks through the support or resistance area and the trader takes the trade in the direction of the break. So if price broke through a support zone, the breakout trader would sell the market in anticipation of the price falling further as it has broken through a support area. All of this increased trading activity usually results in either a victory for the buyers or the sellers. And because more traders are active at these levels, the reversal or breakout usually happens with some purpose and intent, which is what makes trading these opportunities so attractive to traders. However, it is worth mentioning, as with all forms of technical analysis, support and resistance is an art, not a science. There are going to be occasions where the market seems to forget that a support or resistance level is even there. It may just blast straight through it without even giving us an indication that any kind of reaction took place there at all. Or it may break a particular support or resistance area, 
and then reverse having already broken the area. We call this a fake break and it can trigger breakout traders into a losing trade. It can also frustrate reversal traders as the signal for the reversal doesn't happen in the identified support and resistance area. What we as support and resistance traders have to do is have other mechanisms within our trading strategy to refine which opportunities we take at support and resistance levels, other than just identifying them and waiting for price to reach them. If trading was that easy, we would all be millionaires. So how should you use it? For me, support and resistance is a key part of my trading strategy, but I do not use it in isolation. I have other analytical techniques that I use and wait for to give me confluence before trading. If I were to trade solely using support and resistance, I wouldn't be profitable, and it's as simple as that. I personally think support and resistance works best when you use it as one of a few layers of technical analysis that make up your trading strategy. For example, you could use it as the foundation of a strategy and build on it with a few different types of dynamic support and resistance, like moving averages and Fibonacci levels. Or you can use it to build on a strategy where the foundation comes from something like Elliott Wave Theory and look for a particular candle pattern when both streams of analysis line up. Like with any successful trading strategy, you need to have more than one analytical method. If you have a few and all the analysis lines up for a particular trade, then this gives the trade confluence as it has a number of factors telling you there is a good chance this trade will be a profitable one. So, we're going to talk about our confluence by adding two more factors to our support and resistance. Now, in general, there are three key rules you need to keep in mind when placing support and resistance. The areas of the body of the candle. The body is more important than the wick. The more recent the bounce, the more important. Prioritize recent bounces over older bounces. You need at least two connecting bounces to place a support or resistance line. Most new traders learn a little bit about, now we're gonna to go to part two. And this is adding candlestick analysis, but don't freak out. We're not talking about candlestick patterns here. It's gonna be very easy. Most new traders learn a little bit about candlestick analysis, but most of what they learn is completely useless because what they're learning is candlestick pattern recognition. And the standard approach is candlestick analysis through pattern recognition, which fails to work in real-time trading, especially our type of trading. Now, you can't skip straight to advanced candlestick analysis without knowing some basics. If you don't know the basics, that's fine. I got you covered. When Forex traders first start out, they usually learn about candlesticks. But what they learn, like I said, is useless. They norm normally see a list of candle patterns like these, and they're told to memorize them. And when you see this happen, you do this. You act like a zombie. You do this, you do that, you do that. But this is not candlestick analysis, it's pattern recognition. And for a price action trader, it is totally useless. Actually, it's worse than useless. Thinking about candles just as patterns is counterproductive. It makes you a worse trader. It leads you to make massive mistakes. Why? Giving a pattern a set definition leads to tunnel vision. When you see a specific pattern, you assume that something will happen, but that's really not how candlesticks work. All candlesticks need to be assessed based on candlesticks around them and many other factors. So normally people say that a spinning top means a reversal is imminent, which can be true. However, they say the pattern can also mean a continuation is imminent. It can mean that the price is temporarily stalling. It can mean a lot of different things. So thinking of a candle as a simple pattern is a wrong way to do things. We use candlesticks to tell us the story of price. So now every candlestick on your chart is telling you a story. When you combine those candles together, you get the story of price. The foundation of my Trading strategy is reading and understanding the story of price. Reading and understanding the story of price is vital in Forex. Who was in control? Now the question has three possible answers. 
the buyers, the sellers, or neither? Being able to accurately answer this question is vital. If you are about to enter a short trade, you need to ask yourself, who's controlling the market? Is it the buyers or the bulls or the bears? So let's break down the story of price. And this is important because this is gonna become our second part of our triple header strategy. So if you look at the three highlighted candles, it's easy to conclude that the sellers are in control of the market. The candles all close lower than they open. They all created new lows beyond the previous candles low, and they all had some upper body wicks in comparison with the body candle. The upper, the small upper wicks indicate that the buyers were unable to push the price much higher. In other words, we have three red or three bearish candles. Even though we had some little surge up here creating a new high, they couldn't maintain it and they actually closed lower in each candlestick. And at some point, the bull, the bears actually pushed it down a little bit lower. Okay. Commonplace, that's not complicated. Whether it's three candles, two candles, seven candles, 11 candles, it makes a difference. But what does the highlighted candle next to those red candles tell us? This is the candle that becomes important to us. But what does this highlighted candle tell us? It has a short upper wick and a small body and a long lower wick. Okay. Now, this is called an indecision candle. There are many shapes and sizes for indecision candles, but the ultimate crux is that they have a very small body. Telling us that neither the bulls or the bears are in control of that session. Now, as part two of our strategy, we also need this indecision candle okay, to have a long lower wick. Because at some point the bulls were able to the bears were able to push the market down, but weren't able to hold it. Because okay, they weren't sure what they want to do. And we need it to close in the opposite color of the previous candles. Okay. Now, this is only important when using our triple header strategy because we want to eliminate all types of possibilities. What we want to end up with is a pure trade that we filtered out all the other misinformation, all the other possible scenarios. So what's an indecision candle? An indecision candle occurs when neither the buyers or the sellers can gain and maintain control of price. They are common, but if used the right way, they can be very powerful. Here we have just the opposite and we start to see part two of our trading strategy. Again, we use three candles in our creative, but it could be five candles, it could be seven candles, okay? But what we have are bullish candles mounting up a bullish trend. The minimum it has to be is three, okay? Because we're not really looking at a trend. We're not looking for a long-term trend. We're not saying the price of an asset was trending up and now it's gonna trend down. We're only looking for a trading opportunity. Because what we're looking for is a bullish push, okay? And then an indecision candle, opposite color. In this case, so it would have long upper wick, short lower wick, okay? But where does it get created? It only makes a difference to us in this strategy if it is within our support and resistance zone. If it developed here, no importance to us. If it was here, no importance to us. It's only important to us here. Let's go look at my live chart. See, it was only important to us 
here. It was only important to us, well, here it didn't occur. Okay, so it wasn't important to us. Here, if it, here it developed in our support and resistance zone. So we had bullish, 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 but what it is, we didn't get the opposite color. So therefore, it didn't have any value to us. Here, one, two, three, four green candles, indecision candle in the support, the resistance zone, and we got a trading opportunity. So this is where there might be some type of opportunity here. I don't know what it was. There could have been some type of an opportunity here and it presented itself, but it wasn't part of our triple header strategy. All kinds of other things could have told us. This is a bounce off of resistance, okay? It's a reversal. There's lots of things, but our triple header strategy filters out a lot of things. It's gonna filter out a lot of potential trades. Not a, a strategy isn't gonna give you every good trade in a scenario. It's gonna tell you, this trade is available to you now, and it's a good trade. It's got a very high probability rate. You have, that's why you have to have multiple strategies. But we're not finished yet because we haven't been able to make a trading decision. We're getting close, but we haven't made a trading decision. So when price hits resistance and we get an indecision candle, okay, we start to make an understanding. So let's br try to break down into a story so you understand why it indicates indecision. A larger upper wick shows the buyers tried to continue the bullish trend but failed. Sellers took control of price and pushed it down. But we had a small bearish body. The small bearish body shows the sellers were now unable to close lower than the open. This is significant because in the three candles before, the price consistently closed higher than the open. This shows us the buyers were losing their power. The small lower wick, the small lower wick tells us, and now this just gets flipped over and reversed if price was moving down instead of up. The small lower wick tells us the sellers were not able to gain much control either. So this is what we have. So all together, this indecision candle formed right after strong bullish candles suggested the power has shifted from a decidedly bullish market to an undecided market. Now remember, just because the market's undecided doesn't mean that the next candle and the bulls can't jump in there and just push it straight up. And if you would have sold, you would have had a losing trade. So first of all, we've got to have the push up we have to have the indecision candle, opposite color in the support zone or the resistance zone. But there's one more thing we need to look at. The indecision candle is forming on top of a resistance area. If you remember in the previous, you know, previously we talked about, about resistance and uh, being a sell area. So the image above shows us three bullish candles. Price stalls and we get indecision forming on top of that area. This tells us that the sell area is working. When price pushed into that area, sell orders triggered and buyers could no longer continue upward. The, that is the story of price in this chart. And the story gives us a nice little price action trade setup. Price action allows us to take many different types of trades, reversals, continuations, raid, swing, breakouts, and scalps, to name a few. But we want to look at the preceding trend, the indecision candle, and then the reversal trend. So we first looked at the preceding trend. And like I said, this is not a trend line, it's not a long-term trend, it's just that short-term 
current trend? Then we look for the indecision candle. A reversal setup will have one of three indecision candles. The indecision candles need to form on or near the area of support and resistance. If the indecision candle does not form on or near the area of support and resistance, it's not valid, like you see here. An indecision candle is a, in a bullish preceding trend indicates that buyers are possibly losing control. However, an indecision candle does not indicate the price will reverse with any degree of certainty. An indecision candle indicates only one thing, indecision. So, as you can see here in this downtrend, we had several indecision candles come available, but they didn't develop within the support or resistance area. So we cannot enter just yet. We need confirmation now on top of it. Okay, because now we've got two things. We've got our support and resistance zones. We have our indecision candle forming in within the support and resistance zone. The reversal trend is the third and most important part of the reversal setup. This is where we make our profit. After a preceding trend stalls at support and indecision forms, you often see a reversal trend. So the image in the background shows you how that same trend we're looking at forms into that bearish indecision, okay, and forms into that reversal. In this case, we saw a transition of power from the bulls to the bears. Where do we enter the trade though? You know what a reversal trade looks like. You know that you need to enter after indecision and before the reversal trend because you can't enter too late because it's only going a short distance. So entering trades does not need to be difficult. Remember, my goal here is to keep it simple, getting it in at the right time. So we need the preceding trend, the indecision candle, and then the reversal trend. You need to enter the reversal trade after part two, the indecision candle, but before part three, the reversal trend completely takes off. Obviously, if you enter after the reversal trend takes off, it's too late. But sometimes our reversal is only one or two candles. It could be 20 or 30 pips. You also need to make sure you do not enter too early as you could be entering a false setup. So here, you would have gotten nailed to the wall. So failed trades happen. There's nothing you can do about them, except making sure you place your stop loss significantly close so that you don't lose too much. But getting it at the right time lowers the percentage of failed trades. Many people wait for a candle close to get in. But I have tested this thoroughly and waiting for closes gets you in too late. So once you get the reversal candle, okay, you need to enter the next trade when that next candle breaks out of that support or resistance zone. This means you miss out on a lot of potential profit if you waited too late, which is obviously not good. The key to reversal trading or tra any trading is the matter of timing. So how do you do that? So I have tested this countless times and I have found three awesome strategies, entering on the new high or low entering on the retracement entry or entering on the distance. Okay. When the indecision candle forms in the area of support and resistance, see my little thumb is, when I see that indecision candle form within that area of support and resistance and when it's the opposite color, I will set my entry point for when the next candle breaks the low of that previous candle. I'll set my stop loss right at the tip of the high of that indecision candle. Okay. So when this third candle forms, 
the minute it touches that level, I buy. Or I, in this case, I sell. Now, you will get messed up sometimes, but very rarely. We set our entry a few pips below the low of the indecision candle and our stop loss a few pips above the highest point of that candle. In trading, highs and lows are very important. If a new low is created from resistance, it indicates sellers have taken control of price, which means we can get, we want a short. Okay, so here is the exact opposite method. Now, in order to calculate your risk reward ratio, you have to be able to set limit orders or exit points. Targets are also very easy. You need to make sure your target comes before a major barrier like the next area support or resistance. The minimum risk to reward ratio I use is one to one and a half. This means that my target has to be one and a half times the size. You should be using a minimum of one to two. But what's critically important is this is where you would set your entry. This is where you set your stop loss. We've already gone through that. Okay, now our target point, we would set here. It would be one and a half times, or in your case, like I said, two times this. Okay. If two times this puts you into or above an, an area of resistance or support, you can't make that trade because most likely that trade will get stuck here or bounce off of here. So if your target and your risk reward ratio falls below or above a major support or resistance area, you need to say, uh-oh, that trade's not for me. So what you have here is this is where we'd have to set our entry. This is where we put our stop loss. When we calculate our risk reward ratio, this is where our target would be. But we have this problem in between. So therefore, we can't make that trade. So I always start out with my trend line, then my support and resistance levels. Then I look at price action. And finally, you have one last confirmation tool. And that final confirmation before you push that entry point, that entry buy order, is volume. Volume should be pushing upward when you get that entry point. When you have the indecision candle and price breaks below the support or above the resistance level and it's coming down towards where you set your entry level, you should see a change in volume. It doesn't need to be momentous. Okay. But see here? See here. Here, like I said, this could have given you a potential trade. We had the increase of volume, but it did not make the support and resistance area. Okay. But here, this would have given you your final support because you saw the push and the shift in the volume. That would have said, okay, let's make this trade. So you don't want to make it over complicated. You've got your support and resistance. You have your indecision candle. You have your set your entry point, your exit point, your target point. You get volume, and then you enter your trade. Okay. Sure, you may want to use MACD and RSI and stochastics and all these complicated things, but what are they going to end up telling you anyway? Make a trade. So why make it very, very complicated? But test, test, test. You need to have different methods for doing different things because if you only waited for this triple header strategy, you might get one trade in a while because, but when it does offer you the trading opportunity, it's a very highly successful trading opportunity. And on that note, I'm gonna wrap this up. Now, if you notice on your screen, I've put together some handouts for you. 
Okay, these are free. There's nothing you have to register for. Sign up. Just click the download button. I give you the day trading handout guide. I've given the introduction to technical analysis. Great resource book from in investing.com. I gave you the momentum day trading strategy, and I gave you a trend following strategy. All different strategies that you can use and you know and put in to your daily trading. So thank you very much for joining us. Have a great holiday season. Have a great trading year in 2020, and we'll talk to you again real soon. Bye now.